Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, October 30th, last trading day of the month. Hope everybody had a good October. Look forward to a spooky Halloween tomorrow. And of course, the election next week, next week which uh, could be a little spooky as well. So looking forward to that. Um, starting with the S&P, you know, after we had this pullback here, I was really anticipating a bounce going into the election, you know, possibly testing the highs. Instead, this week, we just completely flushed down. Now, the the unfortunate thing is, is when we did pull back here, I started lightening up on some of our short deltas here, uh, and it would have paid off really nicely had I had those on this week. But here's the cool thing about the methodology that we teach and the methodology that we trade is we still made money this week. Uh, even though we are wrong on our assumption. So our assumption was this thing was going to go higher, but because we still kept short delta on, our P&L, our overall net lick, our overall P&L still grew this week, uh, even though we were completely wrong. So, And that's exactly why we, we didn't completely go long. We didn't completely take off all our short delta because the market's going to do what it's going to do regardless of our assumption, uh, regardless of how strong our assumption is, the market's going to do what it's going to do. So Big flush down this week. Uh, we did get flushed out of a couple iron ducks. I'll go over that in our alerts. Uh, first, let's look at the day trading for the week. Uh, so to recap for the week of the 26th here, uh, Mighty90 dug myself a hole down $1,000 on that strategy right out of the gate. I attribute that directly to me and my trading, not necessarily the strategy. Uh, I, I was looking back over my... Um, over my stats, and what I've noticed is that I don't trade the Mighty 90 very well on Mondays, and so I'm going to be making, I'm going to make sure I'm aware of that going into Mondays from now on, and I think it's just, you know, coming off the weekend, kind of out of practice, just got to get the juices flowing, got to get warmed up, and, uh, and and start making some better decisions on some better trades. I think I'm a little bit anxious on Mondays, ready to ready to fire it up and get the get the trades going, and, and that... Um, and that is uh, showing that it's actually a, a negative in my P&L on Mondays. So, and if you look at Tuesday, positive, Wednesday, positive, Thursday, positive, Friday, positive. But uh, based on that initial Monday, still down slightly on the mighty 90 trades, minus 98. Uh, pairs trades, just took two trades, plus 98.50 on those. And then the runners Continue to be an excellent strategy, uh, plus 14.49 on the week, even though we ended uh, with a couple small red days, Thursday and Friday. Uh, Monday was a real nice winner on the uh, on the runner. So, and I've noticed that as well. You know, I start out on the mighty 90s red, and then once I kind of get warmed up throughout the morning, kind of get in sync with the markets and was able to get a lot of that back. But regardless, um, let's take a look at our uh, summary here. So for the week, total 1449.50 and uh, total profit since we've been tracking since the end of August now over 21,000. So uh, continue to do well on the day trading, having a lot of fun uh, next week for the election. So Monday, Tuesday will be regular time on Wednesday, the day after the election, we're going to have an extended live stream. So we'll, we'll jump in there right as the market opens. Uh, but if, especially if there's some fireworks going off, if there's some action to be taken advantage of, we'll be streaming uh, longer into the day on Wednesday. So look forward to that. Make sure you can join us if at all possible. Should be a lot of fun. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week. Starting with uh, Monday on Microsoft, we had a pre-earnings long straddle that we put on last week. Uh, didn't uh, It moved barely out of range for us to book a profit, just a tiny profit there. Uh, so it just kind of bounced around, got a little bit of theta, a little more theta decay. Implied volatility didn't expand like we had hoped, uh, but still were able to book a small profit on that trade. Next trade, uh, forward slash GC, our gold iron condor. We'd been managing this for several cycles, ended up closing it out, booked a nice profit, $607 profit on that trade. Uh, Natty Gas did a rolling adjusting trade, so we're still holding this short strangle in Nat Gas. Let's go to the platform and take a look at Natty. Up a couple percent today. Can see some continued strength in Nat Gas. So since we rolled it, we're down slightly on the trade, a few hundred dollars, but uh, working our way back to profits. A couple more cycles, as long as it stays in range, we should be profitable on this trade. And uh, then we'll consider closing it and potentially 
repositioning, uh, but we got we to gotta stay in this range for just a little bit longer, and we should be good to go on Natty Gas. Uh, next trade, Peton. So we opened a pre-earnings long call in Peloton. The first down day in the market, let's go back to the charts real quick. Of Let's start with the S&P. So let's see, we put this on, what day was that? That was on October 27th. So on October 27th was this day here. So we had uh, you know, two pretty decent down days in a row. But if we look at Peton on those same days, it held up really well. So I was, I was really anticipating a nice bounce in Peloton. Unfortunately, the force of the market just forced this thing down. So we are down on this trade, but we've still got until the 5th is when they announce earnings. So still uh, potentially expecting a bounce. And that, that's before the election. So hopefully we can... Uh, get into a little bit of profit on that trade before we have to close it out. Next trade, SPX Iron Duck. So we closed this one out. So price, this is where we got flushed out of one of our ducks. Price moved lower below our exit point, so we had to close it out. Uh, this was set to expire this day, uh, unfortunately. So if market would have held just that day, we would have been able to uh, score a duck head. Unfortunately, it flushed us out. We had to close it out. Um, so that was unfortunate there. Uh, John Deere did a rolling adjusting trade here. So we've been rolling this trade and keeping that short delta in our portfolio. We've taken some heat all the way up, and now it's finally starting to roll over, uh, which is why we've continued to keep it on. And uh, so price is hanging out right near our break even here on our DE short call vertical. Next trade, QQQ did a rolling adjusting trade in the Qs. So we rolled one of our short call verticals in the Qs. Let's take a look at that. We were over 50% of max profit on that. So we just went ahead and rolled it out to December. Can't believe we're already trading the December options, uh, but keeping this on for that short delta. So we've got a lot of room to move to benefit that trade. SPX. So we opened up a new iron duck, this one with 21 days to expiration. So now we've still got two iron ducks on, one with seven and one with 21. So this is the 21 day duck uh, from that alert. Price is pretty close to where we put it on sitting right here. And then our seven day duck is right here. And you can see price is in the duck head. So we need it to hold not push down through the break even. Hopefully it'll hold here and we can uh, we can hit a duck head to make up for that other one that flushed us out. And let me make sure here, is that seven days? No, yeah, actually five days now. So at that point it was seven, uh, but now it's five days to expiration. Next trade, DIA. So closing adjusting trade in here. So here's uh, one, one set of our short call verticals that pushed lower. We we're over 50% of max profit. Instead of rolling this, we went ahead and just closed it out and booked that. Uh, we've still got one of those left in DIA. And it's sitting here right pretty close to where we rolled it. So, and that's in November still with 21 days to expiration. Next trade, Amazon. This one was fresh. Uh, uh, no, not this one. Pre-earnings long call vertical. So uh, instead of a pre-earnings long call, Amazon is such a big stock that we just did a call vertical. Uh, got not the bounce that we had hoped, but still we're able to book a profit if we check out a chart of Amazon. You can see we were uh, we got in here looking for a looking for a bounce in Amazon. Unfortunately, it flushed down. Uh, but right before earnings, it bounced enough. We got out right here at the top of this bar and we're able to book a few hundred dollar profit. So still profitable, but I was looking for a higher bounce that would have booked, you know, a thousand dollars or more, but still profitable nonetheless on that one. Goog opening trade did an earnings iron duck in Goog and, uh, Google was up today almost three and a half percent. I was actually up a lot more, but came down. So uh, we were still well into the beak. Uh, it's still showing up here, even though uh, market's closed, it'll expire. So we booked the beak profit of 85 bucks. And then the earnings iron duck in Amazon. So this was the really frustrating one. Let's just go to that. Uh, we had to close that out right before the end of the day. Unfortunately, if we take a look at a chart of Amazon again, 
had this huge, so after earnings, Amazon actually had blowout earnings, triple the revenue that they saw last quarter. Uh, but they gave guidance that um, the holiday quarter, next quarter, may not may be a little bit unpredictable. Now, whether that's what pushed this down, I don't necessarily believe that. But just the overall market was down huge. I mean, the, the Nasdaq was down almost two and a quarter percent to end the day, uh, and we were we were in the duck head of Amazon almost the entire day. It opened up kind of right on the bridge between the beak and the head. It was in the head all day, all day, all day. At the And at the end of the day, I mean, it just kept going, kept going, kept going. So we ended up having to close it out right near the end of the day. I know a lot of our members got out uh, sometime in here, sometime during the middle of the day and booked some profit. We were not as fortunate and we we held it till quite, uh, right till the end of the day. And so ended up taking a loss on that one, unfortunately. Skipped one over here, SPX. Oh yeah, weekly double calendar. So this is one I, I made a uh, I posted in the community on instead of closing on Thursday we held it to Friday uh, ended up taking a loss on this one we were closing for about a scratch on Thursday um, I was anticipating potentially a bounce today but obviously that did not happen so we ended up just taking a a, a, a loss we closed it out earlier this morning and uh, so we're out of that the other thing I posted is. So if we look at SPX on the options, on the trade tab, uh, the next cycle that we would look have looked to put on a, because uh, I was looking to put on another weekly double calendar yesterday, we would have used these two cycles here. And the reason we would have used those is because the applied volatility in the front week is higher than the back week. That's higher than that. So we didn't do it because A, that is election week next week. And so after the election, A, there's a potential for a massive price swing, right? And then two, uh, most likely this, um, uh, we'll get a contraction in implied volatility after the election. Now, obviously, if the market starts tanking, implied volatility is probably going to spike. But regardless, that big uh, price swing potential, we are just going to skip doing a weekly double calendar until after the election. And once we kind of get a feel for what happens, then we'll, we'll we'll start kind of loading up our positions again. But we've lightened up our positions. Our, our overall capital allocation is is much lower than it has been. And so that's by intent. We're just kind of lightening up before the election. Uh, we'll still stay mechanical with our current positions, uh, but just didn't want to have, have our positions loaded up going in to uh, such an uncertain event. And then the last one was just our Google expiration trade. Uh, it expired with that big profit that I mentioned. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES. We've got a long put vertical here that we've been holding for short delta, pretty close to where we uh, rolled it. it. It pushed higher, but then with uh, this week's down move, it's come all the way back into range. So we got plenty of room to the downside. And of course, I like holding a little short delta going into the election for the uncertainty. I mentioned Natty Gas. Bonds, we've got this short strangle that's been adjusted, uh, almost a straddle. It's a 78, 178, 177. Uh, price is hanging out right here, so it could use a little bit of up movement to get back to center in bonds. Apple, uh, Apple had earnings down over 5.5% today. Uh, price coming, price was way up here, came all the way back, almost into range, so we're continuing to hold this for that short delta exposure. Same with DE, which I mentioned, same with DIA. Uh, Google is expiring. IWM, similar. We've got a long put vertical here. Price is hanging out outside of range. Need a little bit of down movement to get back in. I mentioned Piton. QQQ, we've got a vertical as well. I mentioned that one. Price just inside the range. SMH, okay, so this one I wanted to talk about. So SMH, we've got this adjusted strangle. Uh, we've got 21 days to expiration exactly today on Friday. So I was looking at potentially rolling this, but I'm going to give it over the weekend. We'll definitely do something with it on um, on Monday. So we'll either roll or close it uh, before the election to uh, kind of uh, reduce our overall delta and or potentially just close it. And then the same thing with XBI. Uh, this one came down nicely back into range for us uh, this week as well. So we're up about $700 since that. This one also is right at 21 days. So we will roll or close that one on Monday as well. Uh, and then we've got XLK, which is another short delta vertical. Price is hanging out just inside the range here. Uh, and then lastly, 
SPY. We've got an iron condor uh, that's getting close. It's about 30, 30% of max profit. We'll look to potentially, we may close this one out on Monday as well. Just again, lighten, lighten our positions, but we'll see what happens. We'll see where everything's at. Those are all of our alerts. That's all of our portfolio. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll catch you on Monday. See ya.